Hello everyone, Ron again, and in this video, we're going to talk about Melodyne and Nectar 3. Now, if you have been watching the previous videos, then you understand that this series is about showing how the Isotope plugins relate to one another and what their intended uses are throughout the course of a mix, rather than showing what they do individually. All right, so the first thing to understand is that when you talk about Melodyne 5 Essential, that's the one that I have because that's the one that comes in the bundle. And you talk about Nectar 3 Plus, that's the one that's out right now. You're talking about editing vocals. So the initial difference between Nectar 3 and Neutron 4 is that Nectar is intended for you to use it on vocals, even though you don't have to, but it's designed for that. And Neutron 4 is designed for everything else. But you, it also has things that you can use on vocals too. So you know, you kind of can do whatever you want. That's what we do as musicians anyway. All right, so the first thing that we're going to need is a vocal. So I recorded one. And you can see it here. If I play it, though, you're going to see that it's too low. So obviously, the first thing that I'm going to do is to turn it up. And I'm in FL Studio 21. This is Edison. So you've got this button, which will normalize it and make it really loud. And now you'll be able to hear it. And this is how I would start off editing any voiceover or any lyrics for a song. You want to, first of all, make it loud enough so you can hear any defects that it may have. Now, if I play this, you may or may not hear the noise in it, but there's going to be noise because the laptop that I use makes a bunch of noise and the microphone is a condenser mic, so it's gonna pick it up. If you look right here, if I was to just zoom in, you can see that there are clicks that are right at the beginning. So what I could do is just highlight them and take them out. That little arrow that was there is a song jump, so that tells you where I actually was in the song while I was recording. But because this is sort of like a voiceover, that's not important. You don't have to actually keep anything in time. So to get the noise profile, what I would do is highlight a section where there is no vocal because then it will count the vocal as noise. Over here, there's this part that's before it where I'm not saying anything. So that's just where the noise is going to be. So I right click this. You see the noise, uh, noise profile is acquired. Then control A and then left click. It's gonna bring up this this pop-up window and it allows you to preview the track without noise. And usually it does a pretty good job by default. Next, we want to get the track into the actual song. So I will go here and drag it into the playlist. Now, by default, it's routed to the master track, so I have to put it on the track where we want it to be, which should be track three. And because I'm just aware that it's gonna normalize to be too loud, I'm gonna turn it down. So now, we should have this track routed here. And, and something for FL Studio users, if you leave Edison running, then when you press play, it's going to play whatever's recorded in Edison from the beginning of the track. And then you'll probably be confused like I was because I didn't know that it does that. So you wanna deactivate it if you're gonna leave it there. Otherwise, it's gonna show up at the beginning of whatever you do and it's confusing and kind of annoying. All right, so now I should be able to hear this without any interferences. So let's see what it sounds like. It was the night before Christmas and all through the house, not a creature was stirring. Okay. So that is satisfactory 
for right now. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to put Melodyne on the track. And this is Melodyne 5 Essential. Now, to actually get the audio into Melodyne, we have to hit this transfer button right here because it's not ARA supported in FL Studio. And basically what that means is that if it was ARA in FL Studio, then it would just, it would automatically put it into Melodyne, but we have to actually record it. So similar to what happened with like Mix Assistant where you had to let Neutron 4, or rather Visual Mixer listen to the entire track. This is the same thing. So I press transfer, press play. It was the night before Christmas and all through the house, not a creature was stirring. And then that should be good for that. So now what you see in Melodyne is that it's showing the different notes that my voice was hitting. And if it just put it simply for you, Melodyne is a tool for you to pitch correct. So if you want the notes to be somewhere else, if you want them to have different variations, if you want to add vibrato and things like that. So like, let's say if I click this first note and I want to make it higher. It was... Now I can do that. Chris. It was the night before Christmas, and all through the house, not a creature was stirring. Yeah. Now, if I don't want to do that, I can undo it. I can move the notes to wherever I want. And I'm not going to delve into Melodyne because that's not the point. This is just to show you what it does. If you were a singer, this is what you would want to do. You pitch correct because maybe it was a brilliant vocal take, but there's a few notes that are kind of pitchy or whatever, and you just want to align them, put them back, or even use it to practice, to figure out what you need to work on, like what mistakes am I making? And you could generate a copy that would sound, it would sound correct, you know, like if you did sing it correctly, but of course you do. So if you're using Melodyne inside of a DAW, and I actually just learned that it's a standalone plugin too, so you could use it outside of a DAW, which is great. But if you're using it inside of a DAW, you have to leave it here and you have to actually have it activated as an effect. You know, but I'm not gonna leave it here because that's actually all I need to tell you about it. You know, so for FL Studio users, something that would actually be useful for you to know is that if you click here inside of a sampler and you go to edit and pitch corrector, Newtone is sort of like having Melodyne inside of FL Studio. It is clearly designed to do what Melodyne does, even though if you get the better versions of Melodyne, Melodyne is way better. And the difference between them is like I said, for this purpose, that you have to leave Melodyne as an effect and it will actively be working. Whereas New Tone, it goes to the master bus because as with Edison, you would just export a new file. So that's cool, that's good to know. So now that we have the vocal, let's pretend, you know, we pitch corrected it. The next step that we would do is to use Nectar. And the purpose of Nectar if I can find it, is to get the vocal to the state where we want it to be. You know, whether it's for a voiceover to make your voice sound better, or whether it is for, say, mixing it into a song, which is a bit different because it involves tonal balance. That is what Nectar is for. So real quick, I'm just gonna do like a dummy version of what I might do. If I was editing, 
some track, so let's see. It was the night before Christmas, and all through the house, not a creature was stirring. It was the night before Christmas, and all through the house, not a creature was stirring. It was the night before Christmas, and all through the house, not a creature was stirring. It was the night before Christmas, and all through the house, not a creature was stirring. It was the night before Christmas, and all through the house, not a creature was stirring. It was the night before Christmas, and all through the house, not a creature was stirring. It was the night before Christmas, and all through the house, not a creature was stirring. It was the night before Christmas, and all through the house, not a creature was stirring. It was the night before Christmas, and all through the house, not a creature was stirring. It was the night before Christmas, and all through the house, not a creature was stirring. It was the night before Christmas, and all through the house, not a creature was stirring. It was the night before Christmas, and all through the house, not a creature was stirring. It was the night before Christmas, and all through the house, not a creature was stirring. It was. It was the night before Christmas, and all through the house, not a creature was stirring. It was the night before Christmas, and all through the house, not a creature was stirring. It was the night before Christmas. All right, that sounds good enough for the purpose of this. Mind you, I could do like simple, quick things like that because this is my own voice. So I know my own voice. And that's not to say that later I wouldn't go back and make it sound better. But this is, you know, just to show you what the workflow would be like. So we've established that we would bring the vocal in by recording it first. Then I would pitch correct it in Melodyne. Or if I wanted to go to this module, I could use Auto-Tune because that's basically what it is. And then I would do Subtractive EQ, Compression, Additive EQ, DSing, you know, probably saturation. If I was a singer, I could make harmonies, possibly a noise gate, probably delay and reverb. So I could use all of these, even though I actually might not use all of them. So when I was thinking about making this video, I put Neoverb here because chances are good that I will have a reverb send track most of the time rather than to add reverb in Nectar 3. Or I would add some reverb in Nectar 3 and then add more over here because you could use pre-delay so you won't hear it cluttering the vocal. You know, but that is actually the intended use of Nectar 3 and Melodyne with a little bit of mention of Neoverb, but I feel like Neoverb is more obvious because you know that you're going to put reverb on the track so that you can make them all sound like they're in the same place. Or create some atmospheric effect or whatever you're using it for as an instrument. You know, you duck the reverb and make things that sound cool. But that's basically all you need to know. And to do a simple summary, we recorded the track and we put it into Edison, cleaned it. For this context, let's say if you had the post-production bundle, Edison is a stand-in for RX because you would do that in RX-10. RX-10 standard or advanced, whichever you have. So that's the stand-in for that. Then we use Melodyne. We use Melodyne <laughs> to pitch correct the audio like I was a singer to get it to be on key and to put whatever vibratos that I need to practice and things like that. And then we use Nectar 3 so that we could prepare it to be mixed into the track. The track is here and Neutron 4 is here. Prepare to connect to the Nectar so that it can show us where the track is masking relative to the vocal. So that's what we're going to cover in the next video. Because the next video will have two purposes. It will answer what is the workflow for when you do a, when you add a vocal to a two track audio, 
which basically means just left and right. It's like, if I exported a beat or a song, but I only had just the song and I don't have all the mix elements to edit them individually, how do I mix it into that? That's what the next video will answer. And it will also show the relationship between Neutron 4 and Nectar 3, which may be obvious if you've seen the last video. But with that being said, I hope that you got value out of this video. I'm going to have videos on the screen. You should click one of those. I might put a playlist too. Like, comment, and subscribe, you know, because then you can have the full picture if you watch the other videos that are in the series. And then all of it will make sense to you and you will know what to do. I also have a series where I went through Nectar 3 and I was showing my process for vocal editing too. And that's also a playlist. And I'll leave that here somewhere, probably. But with that being said, thank you for watching. And I hope that you have an awesome day as usual. Peace.